Uno, dos, tres, dale. Brain breaks. We're gonna talk about brain breaks in Spanish class, give you some different ideas for why you should include brain breaks in your classroom, help you understand how to organize them and give you a strategy that will work for you, work for me, hopefully it works for you, and most importantly, give you some ideas and resources to find brain breaks that you can use in your classroom. Let's jump right in. Hi, my name is Ashley, aka Senorita Spanish, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thanks so much for watching. Make sure you click subscribe and ring that bell so you get notified of all new content that I create for you in the future. Thanks so much. All right, brain breaks in Espanol. First of all, yes, there are brain break resources for you to use in your Spanish class and Spanish, okay? It's not necessarily just translated activities that you've stolen from your elementary school buddies. Let's talk about why use brain breaks in your classroom at all. So I started using brain breaks in my classroom very shortly after my first experience with comprehensible input and trying to focus more and more on using 90% time in the target language in my classroom. Because I noticed while we were getting better at being more focused and just getting more Spanish into my students' brains, it was a lot of hard work for their brains to be thinking and focusing and really absorbing all of that information. And I noticed that they just needed some time to just you know, get the wiggles out a little bit, almost more mentally speaking than physically, but physically too. So that's where brain breaks came in for me. If you wanna read more about using 90% time in the target language and talk to your students and their guardians about why that's important for them, I have a blog post for you on the topic. I will link it for you in the description of this video. So I started using brain breaks and as I wanted to start using them, I realized that there are tons, tons and tons and tons of good brain, great, not good, great brain breaks out there for you to use with your Spanish students. And I was kind of overwhelmed because there are so many, I was like, I'm never gonna be able to remember them all. How am I gonna be able to choose? And I kind of want it to be spontaneous, right? I kind of wanted it to be a thing that was like, oh, I can tell that you guys need this right now. We're gonna do this right now and we're gonna do it because I'm seeing this in you, in my students, right? I wanted to be responsive to my students' needs. But I didn't want it to be like, okay, which brain break, which brain break, which brain break, which brain break, like what are we gonna do? You know, so I wanted to come up with something that would help me have a resource to support my students to include this strategy in my classroom and not just make it like, you know, one more thing that I have to do. So my solution was to put all of the brain breaks that I had encountered and wanted to use with my students into one big Google slide set. Then what I did is I did one of two things, right? I had two kind of two options that I did with these Google slides. One is I just left the tab that had the Google Slides with all the brain breaks in it open. And so when I saw, oh, okay, we're needing to do a brain break, I would just pop over to that tab, scroll, pick one, present it, and we'd go, right? No big deal. The other option that I did a couple of times when I wanted to be more strategic and more purposeful is as I was planning my lesson, I would look ahead at the brain breaks that I'd chosen and pop a few of them into my slides for that particular lesson. And times, for example, when I wanted to be a little bit more strategic is like, for example, we were doing a reading where a little, I can't remember if it was a little boy or a little girl, I don't know, somebody wanted chocolate. And so my students were seeing the word chocolate in the reading a lot, which is kind of tricky because chocolate in Spanish and chocolate in English are spelled the same way, but they do not sound the same at all. So I wanted to kind of combat that whole English pronunciation thing right off the start. So what we did for that day's lesson and for actually several times that week is the choco choco la la, right? That brain break. I wanted to do that brain break because I wanted them to hear and practice what it sounded like in the form of a game without just like being like, this is what it sounds like. You know, so playing that game while we were doing that story allowed them to hear what it sounded like, kind of reinforce it to themselves in their heads over and over again and still have fun and get a good brain break in. So I mentioned Choco Choco La La, the Chocolate brain break. Almost all of the brain breaks that I found and started using in my classroom came from La La Maestra Loca. She has tons of posts on them, but even more than her posts and her ex um, written explanations is she has several video examples of how to do different brain breaks. So I highly recommend if you're looking for specific ideas of how to include brain breaks in your classroom, like which brain breaks to include, go check out La Maestra Loca. She's got tons and tons of ideas 
probably more than you can do in any single year with your students. So make sure you go check out her site for resources. And the last thing I wanted to say is just to make sure that you knew that if you wanted to start incorporating brain breaks in your classroom, the Google Slides presentation that I was talking about that helped me be organized in incorporating brain breaks into my classroom is a free resource on my website. I will link that for you in the description of this video. Just wanted to make sure I noted for you that if you grab those slides and are using them and you like get to a slide and I have no idea what this brain break is, make sure you look in the speaker's notes section of the Google Slides because in those, I linked the tutorial and the source for every single one. So if I created a slide for Chocolate, in the notes section of that slide, it's got a link to La Maestra Loca and her video explaining how to play the game with your students. So that way you don't have to be like, what the heck does this even mean, Ashley? What are you talking about? Okay, so it's all put together for you. Again, I will link that in the description of this video. I just have one more question for you. Which brain breaks are your favorite and which brain breaks are your students' favorites? In case they're not the same thing. Comment below and let me know which brain breaks are your favorites to use with your students. I'd love to hear from you and maybe learn a new break or two. That'd be fun. All right, thanks so much for watching. Remember, if you like this video, to give it a thumbs up so YouTube know you liked it. Click subscribe and ring that bell so you get notified of all new content that I create for you in the future. Thanks so much. I'll see you in the next one.